Hey everybody, as you're going through chapter one, I wanted to give you this little supplemental talk and kind of introduction uh, to the concepts of systems theory. So chapter one uh, talks about it on pages, looks like 12, 13, they have a great model. It's exhibit 1.5 on page 13, and then also on page 14. But just kind of want to emphasize this, just kind of the importance and where it comes from, and then just maybe a different perspective. Uh, so remember, after the Hawthorne studies, all of a sudden we realized that the old way of thinking about organizations, just a simple, simply machines, they were more complex than that. And uh, this people element became an issue. And so uh, researchers back in that day, they, they needed to find out real quick um, about organizations as more than just kind of economic systems and, and basically org theory, departmentalization and division of labor, span of control, those kind of classic uh, org, org theory, org design issues that we will come to at the end of this end of this book. Um, but so management professors, I kind of see them kind of scouring campus, looking for different ideas, concepts that'll provide some insight into ways to improve organizational effectiveness. And we ended up over in the science area and we came upon the idea of systems. A system, you know, two or more interdependent elements that work together to make a whole and they're dependent upon other systems. Systems are, uh, you know, subsystems of super systems and they're also super systems of smaller systems. And so we can analyze from little tiny systems up to really big systems. Um, so we ended up, like I said, over in science and found that those ideas that even just the definition of a, of a system, two or more interdependent elements working together to accomplish a whole, that's really kind of the definition of an organization as well. So those concepts of systems became very important and interesting to organization people. So as you go through there, really spend a lot of time, especially uh, on page 13, as I said, that exhibit 1.5, uh, just has a lot of stuff in it, open systems as, as compared to closed systems. But uh, also let me refer you back to this one. So that management briefs, this is a little thing that I wrote for the wrote for our newspaper for a couple of years and then compiled them and sent them off to BookBoon when BookBoon was new. I think there were only, there were fewer than 10,000 followers on, uh, on the Facebook page back in 2010. Uh, so with management briefs, uh, I think it's the fourth reading uh, from the beginning. Uh, introduced this idea, Kenneth Boulding and his uh, scale of system complexity. And so real quick, let's just kind of talk through it. And I, I think maybe it'll help your thinking on these ideas, maybe give some insight uh, in, into how all this works and in organizations. Uh, Kenneth Boulding said, the most elemental, the most basic type of system, again, two or more interdependent elements that work together to accomplish a whole. He talked about framework systems. You know, it's like picture frames, like tables, like chairs. If you look around the room, we've got some uh, blinds right here, some of those, whatever they're called, plantation shutters, whatever they're called. Um, those things are systems. If you can kind of see the, the in the background where we've got the beams that run across the ceiling, uh, there's systems, Picture a, a picture frame. Uh, you've got the, the frame and you've got the little thing on the back and you've got maybe some glass. There are all these interdependent parts that work together to accomplish a whole, but it doesn't move. It doesn't. It doesn't really do anything. It just. It just stands there. Uh, and if it's not maintained, it might fall apart. Uh, but a framework. The next one is a little more complicated than that. It's like a grandfather clock. Or when I was a kid, I used to have Timex watches that you would wind up, and it was always kind of fun to pop the back off and look at all the little gears and mechanisms all in there working together. But it required an input. Grandfather clocks. You have to pull the weights in order for everything to work properly. So it's more complicated, it moves. All these interdependent elements function together, but they require input from the outside. And when the, when the energy runs out, they just cease to operate. So they almost become a framework system then. But clockwork, more sophisticated than framework. Control system is like a thermostat or even a cruise control in your car. So you set it, you know, think about a heater, uh, let's, let's do the heater. Uh, you set the heater for a specific temperature, and then when the outside temperature, okay, kind of laws of thermodynamics, they want to seek equilibrium. So the inside of the house wants to reach equilibrium with the outside of the house. So as it's colder outside, the temperature will drop. And then at a predetermined point, 
the system then tells itself to turn on. And so it turns on and it blows hot air. And the hot air will continue to blow until it gets to another predefined point where the system says, okay, now it's time to turn off. And so it turns off and then the temperature stops, starts dropping to reach equilibrium with the outside and then it turns on. So it operates in this predefined uh, range that it's programmed to operate in. So a cruise control in a car, if, if it starts rolling a little too fast, it'll help slow you down. If you're going a little too slow, it'll help speed you up. It operates within a little boundary of acceptability of performance. So that's more complicated than the clock. Okay, it turns itself on and off, and then the, uh, which is more complicated than a framework. Then we make a jump, and this is a big jump. Uh, in Boulding's uh, scale, we jump up to this idea of cell, which is the most basic form of life. Okay, so now we've made a jump to kind of living organic systems where these are more machine-like. So maybe you can see the metaphor starting to formulate already. Uh, organizations used to consider themselves or analyze themselves or think of themselves basically down here as a control system. Are we staying on track? Clockwork that we all have to get to work. Uh, but then we make the jump to cell and then cells together plant. And then above more sophisticated than a plant is an animal. And then even more so, more sophisticated is a human. And even more so you put humans together into a social system. And then this, this idea, which he describes as this transcendental system. These are ultimate sets of knowledge and truth. But really, what I want you to zero in on is that during the Industrial Revolution, during the time of you know, Frederick Taylor, Adam Smith, really kind of the, the understanding and the model used to describe organizations were really down here. But then with the Hawthorne studies, all of a sudden we realized, oh my goodness, this is a lot more complicated. We're dealing with people. And so the human uh, scale uh, systems, social systems, you put all those humans together, it becomes even more complicated. Okay, so this, again, just a different way to, to think about this um, as you go through there. These are living organic, you know, from cell on down. And then these are the machine models, uh, the ones that move here. Uh, that framework system uh, is, is something you can build and, and will hold up and do work. Uh, but just a fundamental break uh, in, in two different ways to analyze systems and then relate that back to organizations. So use that, and I hope that helped along with uh, that description of uh, open systems there in the book as well. That's it. Oh, and also the management briefs. Uh, you can find them with the syllabus. I have both of those files. Uh, the management briefs are simply just a, a PDF that you can download. Uh, and and there's, I've got little readings on a lot of this stuff that we'll go over. So that's it. Hope that helped. Bye-bye.